What are those? Oh no, those apple fritters were double glazed by mistake. Double, double glazed. We'll take them. Actually, I gotta throw them out, bro, cause they're not safe for human consumption. We'll give you 10 bucks. Uh, you want those for Hero to go? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I just hit 5 million subscribers. This is not the 5 million subscriber special that's coming soon, but tradition dictates that I make something from regular show. And that clip always gets me in the mood for apple dojis. Oh, so most of the recipes I found on the internet are a quick baking soda-based fritter, but since our heroes purchased their donuts from a donut shop, I wanted to make a real deal yeasted apple fritter. So we're going to start by combining 1 and 3 quarter cups of milk heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit with 2 and a quarter teaspoons spoons active dry yeast, one quarter cup sugar, and two tablespoons of honey in the bowl of a stand mixer. Give it a little tiny whisking and let it sit for 10 minutes after which it should have gotten nice and foamy. To this we're going to add three eggs, lightly beaten, as well as our all-purpose flour, 22 and one-third ounces to be precise. You might notice that I only measured the flour by weight rather than volume, and that's because it's the only ingredient that can vary wildly when measured by volume. Unlike, say, unsalted room temperature butter, which we're going to cut one and a half sticks into before affixing dough hooks and administering a beatdown on our dough. We're going to start nice and slow to make sure the flour doesn't fly out everywhere, and then we're going to mix on medium-high speed for six minutes, scraping down the sides of the bowl once halfway Way through until we are met with an ultra soft, ultra sticky dough. At this point, you might be saying, Oh my god, I need to add flour, but why don't you just trust me for once in your life? Scrape down the sides of the bowl one last time, cover with plastic wrap, and let rise at room temperature for one hour. Just enough time to negotiate our apple filling, for which we're going to need four large Granny Smith apples. Now, there's a number of ways to peel an apple, but only one tests your cooking prowess, your finger tenderness, your empathy, and your inner strength, and that's to try and peel it all in one single spiral. Can I peel this apple? apple and one uninterrupted ribbon? Of course I can, I'm like a warrior poet with a vegetable peeler. I might not be able to say throw or catch a football, or an apple for that matter, but when it comes to peeling, I am your champion. Anyway, no matter how you peel an apple, we want to then core it and cut it into half-inch bite-sized chunks. We're then going to toss these in a medium bowl with the juice of one lemon, which is not only going to flavor but prevent the apples from browning as we make our way over to the stovetop. Into a large non-stick pan goes half a stick of unsalted butter, which we're not only going to melt over medium heat, we're going to lightly brown it. Once you see the milk fats separate and start to change color, add the apples, give them a toss before adding a whole bunch of brown sugar, maybe like half a cup's worth, along with some spices. A quarter teaspoon of cloves, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Simmer, tossing occasionally for about four to five minutes until it's nice and thick and gooey and complete. And the apples are just about cooked through. We don't want our filling to be too liquidous, however, so we're going to thicken with a teaspoon of cornstarch whisked together with a quarter cup of warm water. Cook for an additional minute until super thick and then set aside to cool completely. Because as you can see, it's been an hour and our dough has nearly doubled in size. But it's still super duper sticky, so I'm going to coat our worktop with what I would call an uncomfortable amount of flour. Scrape every little last bit of dough out of the bowl, and then we're going to convince it to form a rectangle by stretching it into a rectangle, on top of which we're going to dump our freshly cooled apples. As you can see, I put mine on a rimmed baking sheet just to get them to cool a little bit faster, and then we're going to spread them out across the dough and fold the dough over on itself like a pamphlet effectively laminating the apples and their accompanying sauce into the dough. We're just going to coax that back together into a bowl, make sure that the apples are evenly dispersed, place back in the bowl, cover, and let rise again for one hour at room temperature until redoubled in size. Then out onto a, again, generously floured worktop, we are dumping this messy, doughy, apple-y kind of thing. A bunch of apples are going to spill out, don't worry, this is a natural part of the fritter making process. Just liberally flour the top of the dough, and then we're going to roll it out to about a one inch thickness, and then bust out your your favorite biscuit cutter, with which we shall cut rounds out of the dough. Just keep cutting until you can't cut no more, and then we're going to pull away the scraps from outside the rounds. Place the cutout fritters onto a well-floured baking sheet, and then we're going to re-roll the scraps back out. And this is such a soft dough that it's not going to make tough donuts once you re-roll it. Once everybody's all cut out, we're headed over to the stovetop, where we've got a quart and a half of vegetable oil heated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, into which we're going to drop our donuts. They're also a little thick, so I'm patting them and stretching them out a little 
little bit before dropping them in the oil because they're going to puff up significantly after about 90 seconds of cooking. We're going to flip them once, let them cook for another 90 seconds, and then once they're golden brown and crisp all over, we're going to evacuate them onto a wire rack in a rim baking sheet so they can drip dry. Rinse and repeat with the remaining fritters until everybody's cooked, and then finally it's time to talk about the star of the show, the glaze. All you need to make donut glaze is a whole lot of powdered sugar and just a little tiny bit of milk. Tiny whisk with conviction until it's nice and smooth and no lumps remain, and then we're ready to get to Duncan. Pun intended. As that nice Jamaican donut shop employee specified, these were double glazed apple fritters. So I'm using a very thin glaze here to ensure that we get a nice, smooth, shiny coating on our donuts. But Pops was able to see his reflection in these fritters, so they definitely need a double dunk. Once the first coat has hardened, we're going to dunk them again, resulting in perfect donut shop style apple fritters. But I was curious to see if I could get the same results with a thicker glaze. So with maybe double the powdered sugar and the same amount of milk, let's see if we can get similar results in one step. And the results were more like a convenience store honey bun, which you're not going to hear me complain about. I love honey buns. And while it doesn't have the mirror sheen that we were looking for for the show accurate recreation, it makes a very handsome fritter. And no matter how you glaze it, these are some picture perfect apple fritters. Light and fluffy on the inside, golden brown and crisp on the outside, with plenty of pockets of warm spiced apples dotted throughout its twisty interior. It makes you wonder how anyone could ever want something like a whole wheat donut. That is, until you eat like three of them for your cooking show and things start moving in slow motion. And with that, I'm off to the gym after a quick nap.